All right, hi, uh, my name is Derek Saline. I lead marketing for Rightware, which is a, a Finnish company, and we make software tools for the development of automotive uh, user interfaces. Um, for those who don't know us, our product is Kanzi. It's a, that's the name of our product family. And uh, we've been in production since 2012 when Audi shipped the an a, Audi A3 with the virtual cockpit. And um, if you go downstairs now uh, in this building, I think you'll see uh, Kanzi powering every of the Audis uh, down there. Um, we actually have 35 OEMs uh, or 35 brands that are uh, in production or in development with Kanzi. And, um, and actually, in terms of a market share uh, in the fully digital instrument cluster, we are market leaders in that space. And we are on track to powering over 20 million cars by 2022. Uh, this talk is about AR. So uh, what is AR? I think you know, a very traditional view of AR is it overlaying points of interest on a heads-up display. Um, I think it's, uh, we think it's a lot more than that. But if you uh, uh, sort of define it a bit, it's uh, you know, integrating real-time data from multiple sources and, um, and providing uh, and rendering that data uh, and, and the relevant data in, in a very rich, uh, richly in context and uh, allowing for uh, stepping beyond the traditional view, but uh, uh, allowing for very intuitive uh, and flexible models of interacting with the data that's, uh, that's presented to the driver. Uh, some of the challenges um, around uh, AR is, uh, you know, uh, integrating this data from multiple sources and then uh, making that data useful for the user. Uh, so, so, can, can hardly uh, see the screen here. Um, a lot of this data is uh, already comes in from online services. It's real-time data. Some of the data is very familiar to us in terms of mapping and uh, points of interest and, uh, um, uh, for example, road conditions and things that are relevant to where the car is right now, where the driver is right now, and integrating that with uh, traditional uh, sensor data about what's going on in the car as well as then what's going on outside of the car in terms of radar and camera, which are, are familiar to us, and, and LiDAR, which is uh, already in, uh, in, in quite broad use um, as we are heading towards uh, 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 sort of uh, assisted driving and on the way towards uh, autonomous driving and then vehicle to vehicle communications, et cetera. So lots of data coming from multiple sources that has to be presented to the user, to the, to the driver in a way that actually uh, makes sense and is useful to the driver. Um, so from the user uh, interface perspective, the uh, OEM, uh, the, the car manufacturer, has to be able to customize and, and uh, sort of have control over the look and feel. But we believe that the, the driver has to have some level of control over the data, what data is presented to them, how it's presented to them, you know, so that, again, so that it makes sense to them. So uh, some uh, personalization is required, which is sort of a key function of a, of a user interface. Uh, that um, that would be uh, have the right level of flexibility, and um, uh, and also uh, to be intuitive uh, and to be able to again interact with the the, the data and the, um, the the display in intuitive and natural ways. Um, so, but I think what what I'm describing is is really uh, positions AR as a stepping stone to to ADAS and and uh, autonomous driving. Um, because uh, you know, one of the things, one of the questions that gets raised a lot is, is, is we go towards autonomous driving, uh, and and when the car drives itself, do we even need a user interface, or does the user interface just become, does the screen and, and the user interface just become about entertainment? And uh, so we believe that uh, that's absolutely not the case. That you absolutely do need uh, a, a, a traditional automotive user interface, um, because and it actually becomes more important than ever. Um, you can foresee a long transition, decades long, to full acceptance of, of an autonomous uh, car that, that drives itself. And we believe that by, by, the, the, with, uh, by, by approaching the user interface correctly, uh, we can accelerate that acceptance. Um, so, uh, you know, one fundamental element is that the driver will have to have, or you could even call the driver a user now, because they're just using the car, not always driving it. So the, the driver um, has to have complete confidence in what the, what the car is doing and really understand the car's intent. And I think key to understanding intent is also having an, an understanding of what the car sees and what the car knows. So, so uh, that's where we believe that richly presenting both audio and visual, uh, in audio and visual ways, uh, that this information on which the car uh, is making its decisions uh, will be incre increasingly important. And, um, 
also just in general, as, as complexity increases under the hood, more and more data coming in, more complex decisions being made by the car on your behalf, um, there's a risk that we go, of course, more and more complex in terms of the user interface. We've seen that in other devices, whether it's uh, uh, smartphones or digital cameras that people don't even know how to use anymore because they've gotten so complex. Uh, we don't want that to happen in the, automotive, in the uh, automobile. So where, where do we play in all this? I mentioned that we've got tools uh, for the user interface development. Our actual UI development tool, uh, which is our core product, is, is really about a rich presentation, beautiful uh, graphics, and, uh, and, and, and high performance uh, 3D as well as 2D, of course, uh, presentation and rendering. Our background is from uh, 20 years ago, a gaming company spun off a, a benchmarking, graphics benchmarking company, that company spun us off, so we have a long heritage in really sort of high performance uh, graphics, and uh, especially in the 3D realm. And, um, and, and again, we're, we're driven by elegant, beautiful uh, user interface and, and providing those kind of tools to our customers, which are the OEMs and the tier ones and, and their partners. Our new product is called Kanzi Connect, and this is a uh, a platform for connectivity uh, within, within, within and without the car, I should say. Um, ultimately, this is, there's, there's multiple levels of connectivity. We have uh, the screens that are on board, the cluster, the IVI, the heads-up display. We've got the devices that people bring into the car, the phones, the tablets, the smartwatches, the whatever they're going to be bringing into the car, as well as then cloud services. So, and that's where this off-board data comes in, all the online services that are relevant to, to, to um, AR as well as then autonomous driving. And so what we're, the core proposition here with Kanzi Connect is providing, is, is putting any data and any services onto any display uh, within this, uh, within this uh, effectively within the system. Um, so just to give some examples, uh, going back to the rich visual, visualization, uh, here is a, a point cloud based on LiDAR data that, uh, that, that really shows how with, with uh, the, um, rich 3D uh, graphics and, and high performance uh, capability what you could do. So you can imagine driving and, and seeing this instead of a point of, point of interest overlay on a HUD, you could see this and really understand what it is that your, your car sees. So I guess I see what your car sees. Um, this is a demonstration that we actually have about uh, 100 meters from here which, uh, at our booth, uh, which shows Kanzi Connect in action among many other, uh, several other demos that we have. And here we're showing three different devices. These happen to be tablets, uh, but, but we could be on, on different automotive hardware, uh, with different uh, automotive operating systems, and uh, basically taking one object and, and flinging it across from one display, and they're not just displays, from one compute platform to another one and you can see this happening uh, sort of in real time in a, in a natural way. And this again gets back to this, being able to manipulate the data that you want to see. If you want, if you want to move the data from the, the visualization from one screen to another, you can imagine this kind of flexibility that we want to give to the, to the drivers or the user of the car. Um, and this is uh, another demonstration that we have here where we actually worked uh, recently with IBM's Watson team to, to uh, th this is an example of an IVI system um, where you are able to engage with, the, instead of just giving voice commands, and, uh, and the way we did this previously was to go out to the Google, uh, to the Google um, uh, speech uh, cloud API and to bring back text and then control the, 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 the IVI system. Now we actually are able to extend the functionality of this IVI by bringing in a smartphone that does that, but then also goes to Watson and then allows for a much more natural dialogue kind of interaction with the car. So again, we're just trying to drive ways of, of, of bringing intuitive interaction with the car and, uh, and, and also a natural, a natural and intuitive interaction with the, with the system. So uh, basically to summarize um, the, these points that I brought up in the beginning, uh, Kanzi Connect is a, is a solution for uh, integrating real-time data coming in from multiple sources um, and, and then rendering it onto uh, any display. Uh, relevant data rendered richly in context, that's where we believe that high performance, beautiful 3D graphics will be important, uh, maybe even more than ever. And again, this uh, intuitive uh, and flexible model, this is a, basically a combination of the capabilities of Kanzi UI and Kanzi Connect. So we invite you to come over to our booth uh, just around the corner and see this, uh, see this all in action or uh, contact me later for more information. Thank you.